Today we're going to be talking about a pure evil YouTuber that was just arrested for some truly heinous stuff. This is not a goofy topic at all. This is going to take that smile off of your face faster than if you had watched a James Corden clip. This is the story about Ruby Frank of the very popular par parental advice slash parenting blogger slash family YouTube channel, Eight Passengers. Which is already a really creepy name, by the way. Eight Passengers does sound like some kind of cult. Eight Passengers sounds like the title to a horror movie. And unfortunately, that's not far off because the woman behind this YouTube channel, Ruby Frank, is basically a monster out of a horror film. Ruby Frank and her business partner, Jody Hildebrandt, were arrested this week and they're being charged with six counts of child abuse. Now, Ruby wasn't alone with the Eight Passengers YouTube channel. Her husband, Kevin, was also prominently featured in there as well. But for some reason, he's not mentioned in any of this right now, aside from a couple of mentions that he's just trying to keep the, the family together and help the children through this difficult time with Ruby being arrested. But I can't imagine a world where Kevin was somehow oblivious to all of the abuse the children suffered in that household. There's no way Kevin didn't know what was happening. Unless he's an absolute fucking lobotomite zombie, there's no way he didn't know what the children are being subjected to. I just can't imagine a single multiverse possibility that Kevin is squeaky clean in this situation, just totally innocent, had no idea what was happening to the kids in that house. Especially considering in 2020, Kevin was front and center fighting on the front lines to defend himself and his wife against abuse allegations, defending their parental style. I'll go into a bit more detail on that situation a bit towards the end of the video, but basically, some viewers were really concerned for the safety of the children based on what, be, what was being presented in some of the eight passengers videos as well as what was being discussed, such as taking away one of the kids food privileges as well as one of the kids bedroom privileges. And eventually they tried to get CPS involved and CPS did get loosely involved. But the whole time Kevin was defending the actions that they had been taking with their parenting. So like he, there's just, I, I don't believe that he didn't know about all of the abuse that was being suffered in that household by the children. But since right now it's only Ruby and Jody who have been arrested, I'll focus on them. They go over some of the stories and videos that she would proudly post on her channel, where she just openly admits proudly, almost bragging, about torturing her children. She built a reputation as being a strict parent with a strict parental style, but strict is not the right word for it. This isn't like some kind of teacher that's like, hey class, settle down, no fishy business, we've got, we've got work to do here. And this isn't even strict like, you know, your fucking basic training drill sergeant or anything. This, the way she treats her children is like the way prisoners are treated at Guantanamo Bay. She fucking posted a video where she was laughing about not feeding her daughter any food because she was punishing her. And she even said that she hopes nobody gives her daughter any food because if she did, then the lesson wouldn't be learned. She was starving her daughter as a means of punishment. And it only gets worse. I learned about this on stream, so I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the clips and go over some of the stories that were shared. I think it's important to mention that this was not some small obscure channel. The content they were posting wasn't just being banished to the shadow realm immediately with no eyes ever being on it, no one ever seeing it. This was a huge channel. Eight Passengers had 2.5 million subscribers. I know it's become somewhat of a trend in journalism to try and like clickbait headlines with things like Famous TikToker arrested for DUI and jiggling butt cheeks to Doja Cat say so on the side of the road. And you read that and it's very eye-catching because it's like famous TikToker. Oh shit. Well, who was it? And then you'll read the person's name in the article about the crime and then you'll check their TikTok page and it turns out they have 50 followers and all they do is speculate on anime power levels. And it's like, well, not exactly a famous TikToker, but it's 2023 so everyone has some kind of social media presence and... Journalists will oftentimes just connect it to that. So famous TikToker does this or famous Twitter shit poster does that, even though they're not exactly a famous TikToker or this and that. But in this case, it really is a famous YouTuber, a very large YouTube channel that gave tons of parental advice for a very long time, had a very successful 
family vlog, and then even went on with Jody Hildebrandt to start doing life coaching and general life advice. All the while, she'd been abusing her children the entire fucking time. I don't know, there's something about that picture that's super eerie. It reminds me of something out of, like, Midsummer. A Utah mother known for chronicling her strict parenting style was arrested after one of her children ran to a neighbor's house seeking help. Her channel name was Eight Passengers? They had 2.2 million subscribers! Ms. Frank hosted the now-defunct YouTube channel Eight Passengers, where she posted videos about her parenting approach with her six children, including refusing them food as a form of punishment. Wait. And she did this on and YouTube? My kids are literally starving. I hesitate to say this because it's going to sound like I'm like a mean barbarian, but I told the kids, I said, I'm not even going to let you eat breakfast until you get your chores done. If I. The red flags were all there. She was hiding in plain sight. That's, that's actual torture. You can't do that. Miss Frank and Miss Hildebrandt were each charged on Friday with six counts of aggravated child abuse, according to the Washington County Attorney's Office. Each count carries a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison and a fine up to 10K. According to the affidavit, Miss Frank's 12-year-old son, identified as RF, climbed out of a window of Miss Hildebrandt's home and went to a neighbor's house on Wednesday morning asking for food and water. The child had duct tape on his ankles and wrists, as well as open wounds. He appeared to be em emaciated and malnourished. This is some pure evil shit. The neighbor called the police, who then found Miss Frank's 10-year-old daughter, Eve, at Miss Hildebrand's. She also appeared to be malnourished, the, the affidavit said. Both children were taken to the hospital. The boy was placed on a medical hold due to his deep lacerations from being tied up with rope and from his malnourishment, according to the affidavit. Oh my god. At one point, Miss Frank had 2.5 million subscribers to her channel, following the lives of her six children. In 2020, Chad Frank, then 15, told YouTube viewers in one family video that he had been sleeping on a beanbag for months and that he had lost his bedroom after playing a prank on his little brother. How did, how did she get away with it for so long? If this was literally in their YouTube video. She, on camera, in her TikTok or whatever, said that she denies her children food as a form of punishment, and then apparently one of the kids also revealed that he had lost bedroom privileges for months after playing a prank? How? How did this persist? This should have went straight to prison. Do not pass go. In one video recorded by Miss Frank and reposted to TikTok, she said her daughter Eve's teacher had called her to say Eve had come to school without lunch. Miss Frank said the teacher was uncomfortable with her being hungry, but that Eve was responsible for making her own lunch, and that the natural outcome is she is just going to be hungry. Hopefully nobody gives her food, and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch, because then she's not going to learn from it. And this is all on video. She said this on video. How... How was CPS not alerted sooner? Oh, and apparently there was even a bunch of, like, petitions from the community to try and get them taken down because it was actual evidence of child abuse. But it looks like none of that was taken seriously. We've been trying to tell the police and CPS for years about this and so glad they finally decided to step up. Kids are safe, but there's a long road ahead. Oh, this was one of the children. Sherry Frank, now a junior at BYU, posted about her mother's arrest on Instagram saying justice is being served. So one of the kids was trying to alert CPS and the police and they didn't do anything? How would you not trust one of the victims of it? Especially when there's so much documented evidence on their own fucking YouTube channel. Now I mentioned on stream how surprising it was that this hadn't happened sooner when she openly posted content about some of the abuse she was inflicting upon her children. And it turns out a lot of the community that was aware of this channel was actively trying to get CPS involved, especially when it came to that beanbag incident where one of the children made it clear that they had been sleeping on a beanbag for an extended period of time because they had lost their bedroom due to that prank that they had played on one of the siblings. So CPS did get loosely involved at some point, but Ruby was somehow able to like brush them off and nothing came from it somehow, which blows my mind because 
This isn't one of those situations with hindsight being 2020. This isn't one of those things where you can just say, man, if we only knew then what we know now, we could have really helped them. Because this is so clear cut, like this should have been a no brainer that something was wrong. For an authority figure to look at any of these videos, it should have been a massive, alarming situation. Fucking sirens should have been blaring. The second that Ruby was proudly gloating, wiggling her fingers, celebrating her incredible parenting of just depriving her children of food as a punishment, that should have been enough to get authorities involved and learn about what was actually happening here with the Ruby Frank household. It's super infuriating that this went on for as long as it did, when a lot of people did keep trying to push this forward to CPS to get them to take action, knowing that something was wrong and knowing what Ruby was posting about and saying was not okay. It's not strict parenting, it's actual abuse. By every possible definition, this is not something where it's like, ah, eh, builds character, uh, toughen up sport, rub some dirt in it. You know, I'm, you're not getting breakfast. In fact, you're also not getting your bedroom. It's going to put some hair on your chest. You're going to learn something today. You know, it's not anything like that. It's fucking abuse. This isn't parenting. It, it, I just, I can't believe that it went on for so long. I'm happy now finally something is being done, but I feel fucking horrible for the kids in this situation that they'd been let down, not only by the person that's supposed to care for them more than anyone else in the world, their, their mother, but they were also let down by the authorities that are supposed to be trying to help them in an emergency situation. It, it shouldn't have taken this long. Ruby's sisters also have hundreds of thousands of followers, so they posted an Instagram statement it said, for the last three years, we have kept quiet on the subject of our sister, Ruby Frank, for the sake of her children. Behind the public scene, we have done everything we could to try and make sure the kids were safe. We wouldn't feel right about moving forward with regular content without addressing the most recent events. Once we do, we will not be commenting on it further. Ruby was arrested, which needed to happen. Jody was arrested, which needed to happen. The kids are now safe, which is the number one priority. I've just got to say that statement of, we kept quiet for the last three years for the sake of the children doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because keeping quiet wasn't helping the children. They were being abused and if you were aware of that, how the fuck would being quiet somehow help them? How is that doing everything you can behind the scenes to keep them safe? Th that's doing nothing. That is literally the Simpsons meme of we've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. If, now, I guess it's possible they didn't know the extent of the abuse that the children were suffering, but even still, if you were aware of children being abused in any capacity, you should have been doing everything in your power to get the kids out of that situation. Being quiet doesn't get them out of the situation. That doesn't do anything to actually save them or keep them safe. You should have made a lot of noise and kept going to authorities over and over again, gathering as much evidence as possible to try and help those kids, and maybe they were. Like, this is, again, just a very short statement, so maybe they were, but them saying that they kept quiet for three years to keep them safe, just, it doesn't compute. Because that's not keeping the kids safe, that's keeping them locked in that prison with the monster. Now, as was mentioned by one of the daughters, there was a lot of attempts to get police and CPS involved that just didn't work. So, it is possible that perhaps the sisters here were actively trying to do that and kept trying to get authorities involved unsuccessfully. It's just that saying you kept quiet for three years just it really isn't, isn't clicking with me. I, I don't know why you would be quiet for three years if you were actively working to keep the kids safe. Let's imagine that one of the kids wasn't lucky enough to break free and escape through a window and get help from someone nearby they'd still be tied up right now in that house and you would still be being quiet. This fucking ridiculous silences golden strategy didn't help the kids. The only person it helped was your sister because it allowed her to keep abusing those children for three more years. And it, the only reason this even came crumbling down and she finally got arrested is because one of them broke free, covered in deep lacerations and was able to get help so they could all be saved. Had that not happened, you would still be quiet and those kids would still be suffering. I know I'm getting pretty heated here, but this story is just infuriatingly evil. I am happy that Ruby and Jody have been arrested. I hope they get the absolute maximum sentence here. 
But I do still think there's other people that knew what was happening in that household that should also face very severe punishment for allowing that to happen and continue happening for as long as it did. So yeah, uh, I just wanted to talk about this. That's about it. See ya.